Hello, it's time to learn rain. I think that his most important ability is actually Geyser Palm. And then the rest are all fine, but they're not like crucial. For me, it's Geyser Palm just because, which by the way, it's this one. It's an amazing anti air. Like, if, if there's a Cabal that keeps jumping, this is gonna snatch him out of the air, for example. Or, I don't know, a Scorpion or something like that. But not just that, it's because with the 1 3 3, you can actually convert. Whereas if you do something else, you'd have to stop there, right? You can't do this. See how he's too far? Or even if you have the other one, you have to do this instead, which, you know, it gives you less damage, but it's hard to hit confirm too. Whereas when you do 1 3 3, much easier to hit confirm, right? And then you can proceed in combo. So I like Geyser Palm. I like Tidal Wave as well, which is uh, this special here. Which is really nice, like in the neutral. Look at how far this reaches. We don't tend to see this one as often as like a, a you know, a, a neutral controlling tool. I think this is actually underexplored. Like we should see this more. People usually just use Tidal Wave as a 50-50. Or just to keep this move safe, right? Because as you know, it's unsafe on block. And it's a dial in, so you can't do anything. Minus 9. You could do a 3 4 down 4. We don't see that often. Probably because you can't special cancel it. And also because the ender is this one here. Which you can't do, obviously, if you do this one that ends like that. You also can see Tidal Wave being used, like I said, as a 50 50, but keep, to keep this uh, dial in string safe. Right? So you put it all in, you see the foot touching or not. And then you keep yourself safe like this. I don't think it's the best technique. I wouldn't do that. Actually, I would never throw out 242 just like that out of nowhere. I only use 242 in combos or just to stagger this one. But don't just throw this whole thing out and then you're forced to keep yourself safe and spend a bar. Makes no sense to me. Now let's talk about his best moves instead of talking about <laughs> starting this guy by telling you guys what not to do. Let's talk about what you should do. So, Rain is much more of a a character that like makes you go crazy because of his movement, right? Look at his wave dash. Like I'm not good at wave dashing, but he's like really, really fast. Even if you don't wave dash at all, this movement is pretty cracked. The the front dash, the distance of the front dash that it covers is really cracked, so which is why you often see Reigns dashing forward and grabbing you immediately. And another thing to his grab, he grabs your shoulder, right, with one hand. This one, he grabs your elbows. It's so incredibly hard to see, which is why I think he gets away with it so often. So the tidal wave, you can end with a high, minus three, the high is duckable, and you can get punished. But there are mind games. You can do one, three, four. It's a safe overhead, but there is a gap, which you have to be careful. But... The mind game here is, do you duck to punish a high or not because he might do the overhead. And then when you're used to blocking the overhead, he can use Tidal Wave as a mix-up. What are the frames? 21 compared to 16? I mean, might be fuzzyable. Might be reactable. Hmm. Kind of hard to say, honestly. It's not a very fatal 50-50. It doesn't do a lot of damage. It's just... Annoying to get caught by it when you're playing against the rain. Sometimes I see people ending the high like this. Special cancelling after the high. It's just to throw your opponents off because usually after this, right, rains, they stop and then they block. You can throw your opponents off like this. If you condition them to expect a special cancel at the end of your 1-3-3, three, three, you might be able to get a poke in like this. Right, they react late and then by the time they react, you poke them. There's Hydro Boost too, this one. You always want to amp that one, otherwise it's unsafe, right? Which is back forward four. So you amp it. I've, sometimes you see people actually doing pokes like this and do hydro boost. I actually don't think it's a bad idea. But the way hydro boost works is if you have two boosts, two waves that touches, like you see right in front of me, there are two splashes. Like there's the, there's a one right under me, and then there are two in front of me. If the two splashes touch. You're guaranteed to hit him with a, a standing two, a standing two, a jump two. He's completely stuck because he's stuck in, in block stun for too long because of the second one hitting. But the problem is if you duck this, if your opponent ducks this, only one boost, uh, I keep calling it boost, one water splash touches and he can down to you. So for example, 
So let's see how it whiffed. So I do this. One of the boosts whiffed. So he's out of block stun, which means he can down to me. So if I try to jump to him after the hydro boost, and my second boost did not touch, he's going to hit me first. So let's let's try it out. Because he has to fa to wait like fairly long before touching the ground. See? Otherwise he would have hit me if I let him hit me, right? <laughs> and since you're really high, your opponent might be able to convert to a full combo, so you have to be really careful. Look look how interesting it is, so I do the hydro boost normal, not the advancing one. And when he's standing, two boosts touch, so it's gonna gel. Whoops. And then I'm gonna try to down to him. Doesn't work, right? But if I do hydro boost advancing on lock, and I try to hit him, now he can still down to me. Isn't that interesting? Because usually it's been thought that you do the hydro boost advancing always, no matter what. So what you wanna do is when he's blocking, you wanna do the hydro boost non-advancing because apparently it's harder to uh, anti-air. And then you hit him normally. So non-advancing the normal one, and then you can jump two. And it's gonna hit him unless he ducks, because like I said, when he ducks, one of the boosts does not touch, which allows him to get out of, of block stun and hit me first. But you will want to use hydro boost advancing on hit, because if I do it non-advancing, I can't touch him. I might be able to get... No, not even. So I can't touch him. Advancing when you hit, non-advancing when you don't hit, when it's on block. To make sure you gel properly when you do jump twos. So see, even if he tries to jump kick me, which has a superior hitbox and is a jump two, if, if I'm crouching, I'm still gonna down to him. I'm even getting a, a down one, and it's because you have to do it without moving forward for the hydro boost on lock. Okay, now, now he kicks me properly. But not if I'm ducking, because one of the boosts still is behind me. Although if I try to send one, it depends on the situation, right? So you just saw he didn't get me, now I'm getting him all the time. Let's say I'm late, I'm gonna try to be late on purpose. Yeah, if I'm late, he kicks me, so... These are all the options you have to consider when picking Hydro Boost. I don't think it's amazing. It gives you more damage than the other one. If I do a simple combo, 1 bar 286, so let's do a simple combo with the other one. 226. So it does much more damage. And that's another reason why I wanted the Geyser Palm, right? Not for all the attributes of anti-air. Which, by the way, it's pretty significant. Like, if I... I'll get this guy to jump forward. Look how far it reaches. So it's significant for anti-airing. But... I mean, so it's 9 frame 2, right? You can do it on reaction. If you're fast, and you... Depending on where they jump, right? <laughs> you don't want to do it if they jump from here. By the time you react, it's not going to work. Or if they cross up. But you want to do it if they're jumping from neutral. Oh my god, his jump kick is terrible. It's like a, a jump kick that's good for when you're up here. But it's not good to uh, to hit horizontally. Right right in front of something. Anyways. So yeah, so the guys with Palm, another reason why to, uh, you should have it is because... It's just you get more damage off of the 1-3. A lot of ranks, what they'll do is they'll get a little bit less damage. Like the combo I just did was 200 and... Was it 200 and... Oh my god, yeah, I should have done that. 272. Yeah, I should have done the double geyser palm instead of doing this string, the ender. 257 compared to 272. Although here you... you no, know, it depends. You can switch sides, but... With the other one, if you want to keep the corner, you do the, the one that I showed you previously. But a lot of people, what they do is they will use this ability, the bubble. What, what is that thing called? It's a special move. The Argus Plunge, which is his armor breaker. So, they do that to you, and then they armor break you. If you break at the wrong time, and it will get a crushing blow. So now the AI is going to break late, and this is going to hurt. Look at this damage, 447. So that's the mind game. When people do that, standing 3 into ball, is just to break armor, or to prevent you to break armor. Because otherwise, like if you break... Uh, let's do it again. Let's say I go for the BN... No, the more damaging BNB. 
then I lose on some damage. So it's just, uh, it's that mind game. Okay, we skipped over a tidal wave. I talked about it briefly, but let's talk about it again. This one. Yeah, I don't understand, like, why we don't see a lot of rains annoying people like this in the neutral. Like, I think rain could be really good against neutral heavy character like Cetrion, Spawn, Joker, who always want to be right here. Because he can be, like, here and still touch you. Which is how you usually want to beat heavy neutral type characters is to either be right in their face or have superior range than they can have. Because if you can't touch them, if you're here, you can't reach them at all, you're going to lose. So you have to either projectile them, right, be in their face or have more range like this. So this is good. So I think that tidal wave is pretty good in, in that aspect. And it should be explored a little bit more, but okay. So... Let's remove these abilities. Let's talk about staggers now. I consider back one to be quasi unreactable. Especially just the back one, this one. Even though it's minus eight. Like, not even that. Like, it's because just the animation, like, when he comes back, his arm comes back a little bit to recover. It's the same thing as this one where he swipes your face, so it's hard to react. And then even the follow up here, which, by the way, has a gap, I think, if I remember properly. Yeah, it does have a gap. But like this one, right? The difference between this and this, there's a, a small gap, a small pause. It makes it hard to react. So when you're up close, you really want to use the back tool. That's his best mid, his best uh, tool, I think. The only thing that sucks is that you, it's so short range, it's incredible. So you have to be really in their face when you use that. There are other staggers that are good, like just a back two. Which, by the way, the back two you can control, right? You can do normally, or you can do back two and um, just go behind him. And you can even hold it. So if I hold it, it's a bit slower. Hold it. But then there's a gap, and you can get interrupted, I think. Yeah, you can get interrupted. On hard read, like, this is not reactable. Whereas when you do it normally, you can't, like, you can't interrupt it. See? Well, I mean, I guess you can trade. But it's a losing trade for you, because you get more damage. You take more damage. So this one is a good stagger, back one, and then you resume your stagger game and stuff. Which, by the way, when you complete this ring, you're here. It's fine, right? Rain, so he has the type of moves where you want to be close, which, by the way, his strongest moves are back two and standing one from here. And then when he's here, he has different types of moves where he has long-ranging normals that don't combo or not hit confirmable. I guess 4-2, right? Which is real nice. He has standing 3, 4-3 uh, I mean. Which, the first one is a high, the second one is a mid. He covers a lot of range, minus 1. What 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 is that, minus 4? But I feel like just because he can close in the range so extremely quickly, him being in the neutral and having stubby T-Rex arms is not a big, big problem. Just because he can just come in and out, which is why, like, his types of staggers, like this one, for example, 4-2. You can't do 4-2, 1 plus 3, that's unsafe, minus 15. But you can do 4-2 into back 3, down 3, down 4, sorry. 4-2 into down 4, that's safe, but you don't get much damage. But you can, like, trip people out with doing stuff like this, right? And then you grab, and then... When they scare the grab, you go in like this because the punch looks a bit like a grab, you know, in extreme stress. So yeah, Rain is a pretty, I think he's the second hardest character to play in this game. First one being Fujin. And it's just a character where you're going to have to rely on his movement. And you're going to have to grab a lot. And that's okay because his grabs are not telegraphed compared to like, I don't know, who has a telegraph grab? Like Liu Kang, you know, where he puts his, both his shoulders on top of your both of his hands on top of your shoulders. This is very, like, this is hard to see coming. And it's very scary when you have a rain that doesn't want to stay immo, doesn't want to not move. So if you're going to pick rain, you have to be someone who likes moving. There's no way around it. This is, this is how you play the character. When you're in here, you use longer range moves, right? Which, you know, we didn't even cover this one, the back three, four, it's just, it's a normal attack, like there's nothing special there. When you're close, you want to do back two and you want to do standing one. If you're going to do standing two, 
it's just don't complete it it's just a touch like this right a touch or if they get used to you just touching you and then they re they know that you're gonna stop then you can just put it all in and keep it safe with something like this make sure you amp it or you to just do it with the with the, the the low at the end to keep it safe to keep your opponents on their toes this move is unsafe but if some people don't know how to punish it you're gonna get away with this like minus 21 but it's far right so <laughs> people need to use a longer range mid usually or something like that to reach you after you bubble so try it from time to time against players that are mediocre don't try it against players that are good okay evaporate that's good against uh, projectiles obviously but just be careful because there's a lot of recovery 25 frames of recovery like when we first saw the previews we thought like we would just yolo on their faces but it's actually dangerous look how long it takes before it can block again whereas all hit all this is like he's vulnerable to getting hit so you want to use this against projectiles i would not really recommend using it here it's eight frames of startup so it's possible that slow really slow gaps you might get away with by doing this through gaps like how much is 16 22 minus 16 but i've not tested this so i, I don't know and in theory it works i don't know if it actually works in real life but either way use this to avoid projectiles and that's it really okay guitar toss okay this one it's not it's not amazing it's not awful <laughs> i think it's a very i think on like below average the only like because like he's stuck you see how he's just waiting for you to get touched instead of it's hard to like spam with with rain i find spamming projectiles it's a little bit difficult it, it, i don't know i'd have to analyze this against other projectiles like against this a, a sonia projectile to see who's faster maybe it's just in my head because i'm seeing the animation but it just seems a bit slow and the only thing that's strong about it is that when you amp it the animation of non-amp and amp is hard to react to which means that when you play against rain you might as well just block all the highs and take chip damage because you can't react to this one it's too fast right so i think that's why it might be good which by the way you know if you've been interrupted with this with a flawless block whatever gas he has you can always just throw this out there and if you amp it it's safe minus five what if we don't amp it minus 12 right so you amp it to prevent them from flawless blocking you that's a tool that he has we'll look at another variation now water ball which takes two slots unfortunately use water ball just to have more damage essentially which by the way again you can't convert off of this of the one three th no, yeah the one three three right you have to do one three react do it immediately so okay when, when you water ball normally it comes back right behind you amping it you can go up and down he gets a bounce back and then forward I don't know why you would want to make him go forward and then back. Maybe you want to put him in the corner or something. But usually, water ball, I think the way it's been played is that you make it go up so you can down to him for more damage. Up, I said. Not down, I kept going down while this thing up. Here you go, 343 damage. For two bars. If you spend one bar, it's going to be about the equivalent to the other type of damage you can get. Right? So if I do something with one bar with this. 272, that's super easy. One bar, right? Let's look at the other one. Three hundred and five, but that's also with having this. Let's look at one without this thing here. What's that thing called? I keep forgetting. Geyser bomb. The thing about this too is that getting the ball and the down two in is actually more difficult than the other combos. So that's something you have to consider. Two hundred and ninety-five. A bit more damage. Twenty more damage. Yeah, 195 for this one too. So it's 195 compared to 275 when you're just willing to use one bar. Like, let's say I'm willing to use two bars with this other thing here. Yeah, 
Yeah, 282, this is like, it's not worth it at all. When you can just get like an equivalent amount of damage, almost. Yeah, you get almost an equivalent amount of damage by just doing the geyser bomb twice. So, two bars is just not worth it. At least not with this BNB. So yeah, the point is that Water Ball gets you more damage, but it's high execution. It's hard. I'm not gonna lie, like I dropped this many times while doing this video. Well, I drop it, and yes, I dropped it. <laughs> See? So, see. Something to consider. So let me just check if I have a few other interesting variations with different moves. I don't think that Riptide is very good at all, actually. Just 60 damage. Can't even amp it. Like, the distance is nice. Well, maybe not that nice. Like, you could easily have a low instead of this high with the other attack, right? With the Dumbback 3. With a Tidal Wave, I think it's called. And this is a high that you think, like, okay, for head advantage, but it's only for head advantage. Uh, like, it's a restand, but it's for head advantage, and he's there. Is it a restand? It is a restand. For head advantage. Okay. I mean, you could get this in. This becomes an 11 frame mid. Well, it touches on the 11th frame if you're frame perfect. I just don't think it's worth it, guys. That's my take on it. Tell me if I'm missing something. Hydroplane, this one is very interesting. So triggers a crushing blow after being delayed for a short time. But <laughs> it's hard to get against someone who's not blocking. It costs one bar of D to cancel. So I'm going to put my easy crushing blow off. Yeah, you get it about there when he's like charging his chest and he's starting to like... I just follow the animation. I just follow the animation. You don't have to hold it like all the way. Like this. Just as soon as he starts to like move his chest a bit. <sighs> Not there, but... Oh my god, okay. You have to get a feel for it a little bit. But usually how I use this move is just for foot seeing and stuff. Like, I'll be here, cancel it. Something that trips people out too, sometimes you cancel it and bring it back and app it. And then it still hits, so... It's just part of his arsenal of, of movement, right? Which... This one is actually pretty nice because... Because it makes, it makes people whiff, right? So if we have this guy, he's trying to hit me. So let's say I move and I react that he's whiffing, you can do something like that, right? So yeah, so this one is nice. Uh, unsafe though, unblock, so be careful. How much is it unblock? My, no, minus 16 compared to... Ooh, still minus 16 on app, but it pushes back, so you're fine. Is there a difference in pushback if I hold it? No. I mean, raid is so fast that you might even be able to fake this out and get a grab in. Before this guy, like, by the time he reacts, you grab him. Yeah, range movement is the best. I think it's even better than Fujin. No, definitely better than Fujin. Quantum Slice. Like, this is one where I've never really appreciated yet. I think that there is a purpose to this one, that it covers a lot of range. It's usually paired with Quantum Rift. When you absorb two projectiles, you get a crushing blow, but... I have Quantum Rifts, and I'll show you later. I don't pair them. Like, this is just... I'm just experimenting. I should pair them, but... Actually, I'm gonna change my variation after that to pair them for it to make more sense but yeah like this is a high but the range is actually really nice so he has nice ranging specials which is cool yeah so this thing it's just it absorbs projectiles as simple as that my problem with it is just it doesn't last long it lasts like three seconds if you amp it it lasts how long does it last looks like it lasts about five seconds so i mean okay and it disappears what if we have it come on amp it yeah, it still disappears after one projectile. Like, why would you have Quantum Rift when you can just go into Evaporate or va Vapor, whatever it is. <laughs> like it's, what is that thing called? Like this thing here. Evaporate, right? Vaporate? <laughs> you can absorb many projectiles at cost no bar. I guess the other one only makes sense if you put it together with the Quantum Rift or whatever that thing was called. No, the, the you know, the, uh, the Quantum Slice thing? I know I'm butchering all these names. Anyways, I don't have it there, but that's the only reason why it would make sense. In terms of meta builds, I, it's hard to say, but it has to be between these two. So Geyser Palm, Tidal Wave, and Hydro Boost are... Geyser Palm, Air Argus Plunge, like the air abilities, transferring the air abilities here, and then Tidal Wave. And the reason why is because you, you, you can evaporate in the air, and you can do Argus Plunge in the air. This move here. This is great. Like, the only problem is that you have recovery. But it's okay if you're here... And you have 40 recovery, but you're still here. Which recovery, like, I'll try to jump. As soon as he lands, you see how long it takes? 
but you just don't want to get caught like being it's not a teleport that like, you're gonna get punished badly so there's that there's this as well which is nice some recovery it's not too bad 18 I played a dude who kept doing this and he was tripping me out and then he came and did all sorts of other stuff so if we look at my Adam Sandler build now if you equip quantum slice with the air moves you lose the bubble in the air, like I showed you earlier, but you get this. It's an anti-air, if you amp it. You can double anti-air, which is cool. Um, if you go down, now well, that becomes interesting. It's unsafe, but look, you amp it. Recess neutral. And this can crack people out so much. Like, I've been cracked out by this. I played a guy on Combat League who... Uh, why is it not evaporating? Oh, because I have Quantum Rift. Alright, so if we look here, we have the... I think it's called the Dinian Force to make those air moves. You have air evaporate here as well, right? Which is really good. Especially if you want to be like a spammy jumper like this. And then from time to time you... You YOLO in their face, something like that. And then they throw a projectile, you just keep doing this. Like the recovery of the jumping is better than the normal on the floor. Like this is 18 recovery. And you can spam this. Please don't do this. Don't be, don't be annoying on Combat League. But if you're just in it for the victory, it's an option. Which, by the way, when you get people to be conditioned to block the amp like this, you can abuse that and start not amping. It's gonna work. So yeah, just some air mobility, I guess. Some air stuff. Not mobility, but it's really interesting trip people out <laughs> okay guys I think that's it just to recap no matter what your ability is the strongest way to play rain is through movement you want to be dashing in and out tripping people out if you don't know how to wave dash it's okay don't worry you don't even have to wave dash you just have to move in and out and use your dash often don't you, like I don't want you to just walk with rain I want you to dash take advantage of it it's the best one in the game Take advantage of it. If you can learn how to wave dash, if you can, do it. And I want you to grab often. A lot of grabs. A lot of back grabs too, because they just seem to be so goddamn hard to counter for some reason. And a lot of staggering in the back one. Back two, I mean. This is great. Like, you can stagger into grab. Stagger, one, two, into grab. But I'm just going to tell you, the, the stagger, the back two only, it's going to be a bit stronger. It seems harder to react than the other stuff you stagger your back too, you stagger your standing too and you go ahead with the standing one two, standing one three sorry right so sometimes you're gonna dash and grab sometimes you're gonna dash and one three and this stagger here one three into one three or one three into whatever else is great as well so make sure you stagger a lot with rain and grab a lot as well grab stagger and move pretty much and if you're far in the neutral Use your neutral heavy tools, your long-ranging tools that can disrupt other people's neutral, like 4-4, four, four, for example, right? Even like, back 3 has nice range, surprisingly nice range. Maybe not that nice. Okay, maybe don't do back 3. <laughs> but 4-3, this is 4-3 and 4-4, four, four. you want to use that as well, often in the neutral. And when you crack people out with your movement, your dashes... You might want to do some back dashing after you staggered 4-2. And if you bait a movement, bang, that's going to be a crushing blow. It's going to hurt. One last advice. I want you to look at some damage here. So imagine it's going to be a punish, okay? 289 damage if you just leave it as is. Zero hit advantage, so don't do that. Finish it with 4. 300... And 17 damage. For those who don't know, you can actually fatal blow this. So let's look at how much damage it's gonna make. 455. This is extremely interesting because did they change this recently? I remember it's scaling extremely hard. Why why is it not scaling right now? Interesting. Anyways, I guess it's good now. I remember it used to be so bad that you just wanted to kick after. Like this, right? You didn't want to complete it or special cancel it into a fatal blow. But I guess it doesn't scale as much now? Was that a, a hidden patch? Uh, anyways, people are probably going to correct me here. Please correct me. Tell me if I'm wrong. Anyways, guys, that was the guide. 
Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.